There's one other type of equation, um, and slope-intercept form is probably the major one. Um, but there is another form, and it's called point-slope form. A linear equation is written in this form right here when it's in point-slope form. The reason it's called point-slope form is that if you look here, you see x1, y1, those come from the point, the coordinate point over here, and then m is the slope. So in point-slope form, you can tell what one of the points is on the line and the slope. The line passes through x1, y1, and there's the slope. So there's a picture demonstrating what I was talking about. In example one, we have to write in point-slope form an equation of the line that passes through the point negative 6, 1 with a slope of 2 thirds. So first thing I'm going to do is write the formula first. Anytime you have a question and you have a formula, you should always write the formula first before you plug in anything. So now this is x1, this is y1, and this goes in for m. So now it's just a question of plugging in my values into the formula. So y minus 1 equals negative 6 times, oh, no, nope, not negative 6, the slope is 2 thirds, x minus negative 6. And x minus negative 6 is the same as x plus 6, so I'll write that instead. And this is all they want. It's in point-slope form using that information. Example 2. Write in slope-intercept form. See, now you got to pay attention to what kind of form they want. An equation of the line that passes through the points 2, 4, and 5, negative 2. So I want to use that formula that we learned a very long time ago that we haven't necessarily used that much. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I taught you this back in the slope lesson, which was lesson 4.2. So I'd like to use it now. So I'll label x1, y1, x2, y2. And the reason that they label like that is because this is an x value and this is a y value. This is an x value, this is a y value. So now, again, it's just a question of plugging in the numbers. y2 is negative 2. y1 is 4. x2 is 5. And x1 is 2. So let me simplify that. Negative 2 take away 4 is negative 6. 5 minus 2 is 3. And as a final number, that's negative 2. So I'm going to start my point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And now I've just found out what the slope is. So I can plug that in the formula for m. But the question is, what do you plug in for x1 and y1? Well, luckily, I already have it labeled. What a coincidence. Isn't that wonderful? x1 and y1 are already labeled. So let's plug in. y minus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 2. Oh, but never mind, that's not what they wanted, and I even underlined it. Ah, oh, this is why we lose those silly points on a test, because they want it in slope-intercept form. I almost fell for it, so that's not the, the final answer. We actually have to get it in y equals mx plus b form. Duh. So, that's an exclamation point at the end. So, I need to distribute. So, y minus 4 equals, I'm going to distribute the negative 2 negative 2x plus 4. Then I'll drop a line and add 4 to both sides. And now what they wanted is y equals negative 2x plus 8. This is the answer right here. Sorry about that. I almost got it wrong. All right, let's check out this example. You finish parasailing and are being pulled back 
to the boat. So here's a picture of someone parasailing. After two seconds, you are 25 feet above the boat. So you were up here in the air, and then you started falling, and two seconds after you started falling, you're at 25 feet. So I've got this grid here. We'll use that in a minute. Let's check out some of the questions that I created for you to help us figure out how to um, answer that question and come up with the information. Slope is known as rate of change. What number in this example three represents the slope? The answer is negative 10 because you're changing at 10 feet per second. This is your rate of change, your speed, in a sense, of the change that's happening. So, and since it's going down, it's negative. So even though it's not in the question, it is in the picture here at negative 10. B, how can you write 2 seconds 25 feet as a coordinate point? Well, if um, we're going to let x represent seconds and y represent feet, that will be the point 2 comma 25. Letter C, plot the point and use the slope to graph the line that represents this situation. So we're going to make a super big quadrant 1. Um, so let's do that. And X is representing seconds. And I said Y is going to represent feet. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and plot the point 225 and get a couple more points by using the slope negative 10. Um, make it fill up the whole grid. Grab a straight edge or a ruler. And when you have that line, play the video back. All right, so I've graphed it. I plotted the original point here in black at 225. And then I plotted points up towards the y-axis, points continuing the line down towards the x-axis. Um, I didn't put arrow tips on because you're not going to go into the negative feet and you're not going to go into the negative seconds. So it's just um, one line not extended. I did, I counted the um, intercept to see where it would be up here so I could write the equation on the line and it's negative 10x plus 45. So now let's check out the rest of the questions. At what height were you parasailing in the beginning? Well, that is luckily what I actually just figured out. It's up here at 45. That's where you started because that's what the intercept really represents. It represents your starting point. So uh, 45 feet. And I got the equation already. Y equals negative 10x plus 45. And you reach the boat here at one, two, three, four and a half seconds. All right, the next um, section that we have. This technique is probably the more common way of doing uh, something in slope intercept form or just finding the equation of a, of a line when you have a point. You can use the point slope formula, um, but a lot of people like to just use the general y equals mx plus b because that's the one that they're more familiar with and why should you learn another formula if you don't have to. So the point slope formula exists, but there is another way to do it using our more common one, mx plus b. So here's what you do. We've got m um, up here, m is 2, and then remember this is x and y. So here's x and here's y and then here's m. So you have now m, x, and y, and now you just have to plug it in. So negative 2 equals 2 times 4 plus b. That's a b, not a 6. So now you just go and you solve it. So negative 2 equals 8 plus b. And you just have one variable, and now you solve for b. So I will drop a line. Actually, I probably should do that down here. And 
then drop a line and solve for b. Minus 8, minus 8, and so you see b is negative 10. So the intercept is negative 10, and now you just plug it back in the formula, 2x minus 10, and that's slope-intercept form. Um, why don't you try the second one on your own? Pause the video, try it, and when you're ready, play the video, and you'll, hopefully you, you will get it correct. So hopefully you got it right. Remember the slope they give you up in the question, so you just bring that down, and then the intercept comes right here. Whatever technique you like, go for it. I don't care. It's really up to you. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me in class.